and welcome to Makers.dev episode number 85. Chris, did you know that 85 is the sum of, hold on, it's the smallest number that can be expressed as a sum of two squares where all of those squares are greater than one. Did you know that? What? <laughs> <laughs> so like, like, uh, like one squared plus two squared yeah uh would be four plus one is five but you can't make that a different way that was a bad example so it's 80, 85 <laughs> is uh 92 plus 22 and 72 plus 62 hold on but those no, aren't not. squares <laughs> what are you talking about the smallest this i just copied this from wikipedia <laughs> okay this would be interesting <laughs> hold on 85 Go is home, 92. wikipedia you're drunk <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Uh, how are you? How's your COVID doing? Uh, I'm doing all right. Uh, COVID is mostly better, um, but I do have uh, like residual fatigue. So like I just went to the store, for example, and uh, I just feel exhausted. So I'm not actually sick anymore, but whatever, what whatever that is, is stuck around, and I just get really exhausted after like ten minutes of physical physical activity. So yeah, I remember yeah. that happening for like the month after I had COVID and I just felt so frustrated with myself and uh, retrospectively I can, I can totally see what was going on but like in the moment I'm feeling like ah I should be doing more stuff and uh, I don't feel like I want to do it so uh, yeah it's okay it'll get better it won't always be like this all right well that's good to know <laughs> Ho- <laughs> hopefully yeah hopefully uh, but yeah otherwise I'm doing all right uh, I did almost no work because uh, of that but uh, yeah how about you how are things going so Same, but for different reasons. Uh, I did very little what we would traditionally consider work, like computer stuff. I think I think this last week since our last episode, I've only been on the computer for something like two hours, and most of that was uh, setting up a CNC machine, which like is hardly (laughs) traditional computer work. I was just uh, uh, trying to trying to get this other machine working. Uh, So it was a very unusual week for me. I I did like a lot of physical stuff uh, that I'd like to touch on, but uh, and and there are pros and cons to that, like. I really enjoy doing computer work and programming stuff and that sort of thing, but uh, I, I find myself being very sedentary doing that. So I have the routines and rhythms and it's very comfortable for me to do that and uh, I, I enjoy it a lot, but it was fun to mix things up and uh, I had some days where I was just like on my feet walking all over this property, like finding tools and doing stuff and building stuff and at the end of the day I have like three physical things that I've built and that was really enjoyable uh I'm using my hands and using my body more and i totally get the meme of like programmers who quit programming and then go into carpentry and making furniture yeah. and stuff i get it like it's it's <laughs> eerily similar uh like it's all process based and you have to be very meticulous and uh but there's some wiggle room and like there's tricks and you, you, the more you invest in tools the easier the thing is um so yeah that's that's what i'm gonna talk about later uh yeah tell me tell me about uh kaggle stuff though i think you, you said you found uh, another competition to sink your, te- your teeth into yeah so they launched a new one um this is in uh relation to or like has something to do with defcon um so it's kind of interesting and it's all about like ai um safety i guess and, and sort of like trying to hack ai things and so it's a series of little challenges so there's like 15 of them or something and they they have like a server set up and you have to like solve the challenge and then and then uh post to the server um in the first five people or the, the top five people uh at the end of a month get five grand each uh, which is kind of cool um and so like at, presumably five people will solve all of the challenges in a month um and uh yeah i'm currently in fourth place which means nothing because i'm completely stuck <laughs> so <laughs> i have like five challenges left or something and like i i'm sort of stuck but it but it's great work because like i can't because of just coming off of COVID, I can't like focus for that long and whatever still. And so these are like sort of bite-sized challenges I can sort of mm. uh, solve. And so, yeah, it, it's a fun change of pace. Yeah, so that's what I've been doing. Can you, without any spoilers, can you talk about the sort of problem this is? I'm curious what an AI flavored challenge like this would look like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's several different ones. Um, some of the simple ones are like it's just like it gives you some data and it just asks you to like find the dimensionality of of something so that that's like super mm. straightforward and then it gets start starts to get more complicated and it's like here's an ai uh, model on a server 
try to trick it into thinking that this uh, this picture of a wiener dog is actually a hot dog. So that's Interesting. one of them. Okay. So, so that's kind of cool. Um, and then one of them is uh, you're a student and here are your grades, but you can't go to the homecoming with the grades that are this poor. So uh, you you can you hacked in and have access to all the students' grades. So change everyone's grade to make yours look better without you know overdoing it and and getting flagged by the system or whatever <laughs> um, so there's that and there's several the, the the some of the harder ones are like they have a deep fake video and it's like this got flagged as a deep fake uh fix it so it doesn't get flagged as a deep fake interesting um so yeah all, all sorts of different uh different techniques and different uh challenges um yeah but some That's of them so are are uh ex- vague about what you have to do like some of them are very straightforward like it's very clear what you have to do you just have to do it till you solve the problem. Mm-hmm. Some of them are like, I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> and so you just <laughs> mess around uh, until you try to get somewhere. Um, yeah. So I'm the, the ones I have left are extremely uh, difficult to even figure out what to do. <laughs> yeah. Can you talk about the ones that you're stuck on right now? Um, yeah. So one of them, wh- they provided hints for the one of them. One of them is like you, there's a uh, AI model and you have to pass images to it 32 by 32 images and you get back six numbers Mm. and each of those six numbers is a class presumably that correspond to different letters and so you have to pass images i think of letters in order to like get each one of those to like flag as a one you know so like Mm -hmm. um and i thought i did that and it's i just didn't get the right it just said no that's not right Mm. and uh it's it's just extremely difficult to figure out exactly what you're supposed to be doing, even with the hints that they're giving. Mm. And so, uh, like that's one of them that I'm stuck on. Another one is like, um, uh, they have an AI model that's detecting whether a base 64 string that's being passed is malicious or not. So it's like supposed to be, uh, uh, like a firewall. And, uh, the example they gave, which was being flagged as malicious, isn't even a valid base 64 string. And so like, that's confusing me. Like I'm, yeah. So, uh, uh, those, those are a couple of them that are very confusing. I'm I'm curious about how they're ranking you on this because you said you were in fourth place, but th- these challenges sound like like you either solve them or you haven't. Are you just like the furthest along, and there's only there's only three people in front of you? Yeah, yeah. So every every time it's called capture the flag because you get a flag. They call it a flag. It's just a string. Um, after you solve each one, so there's like I think 15 or something challenges, and they're worth different amounts of points. Um, based on how hard they are presumably and so you solve them you get a flag you upload that to cat that's what you upload to kaggle mm. and then um as you collect them you get like the points and so it goes from zero to one basically where one is 100 percent complete mm. and so i'm at like 64 percent or whatever um and uh yeah but the, the the trick is that you don't have to upload them until the end and so at some point i'm sure like five people are just going to post you know they're, they're going to have not submitted and then they're just going to get them yeah, all yeah. at once. I'm sure that's going to happen. Um, but it's, it's uh, like yeah. at the, the speed matters in this to, to yeah, be like the exactly. first one. Yeah, exactly. It's the first, yeah. So if there's a tie, so if like a bunch of people get all of them right, it's the first five. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. How fun. That's really cool. Uh, so the, the one that you're currently stuck on sounds like y- you're given... You're given an image classifier, but no labels. So you're just given like the the outputs of the uh, output uh, neurons in, in yep. this neural net, and so you first have to like decode what the labels are by uploading pictures of digits, probably. Uh, yep. And then once you've mapped out what each of those six outputs are, then there's some other thing that some sequence of numbers, and then that's like the the code to capture this flag. Yep. Got yep. it. So that's one of them that I'm working on that I'm stuck on. So, but I'm stuck yeah. on like five of them. So, oh, yeah. you get to see all of them all at the same time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You don't oh, have to okay. do them in order or anything. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. You get all of them at once. Yep. I'm I'm excited for it. This is uh, sounds like a good COVID project. Uh, yeah. When I had COVID, I, I think I I came up with uh, this like word thing. Oh, I'm trying to remember what it was. Oh, all the phrase "all roads lead to Rome." I was like, oh. That's interesting because Rome is like also a verb. So you could say like all somethings Rome to something. Oh, and, uh, and lead is like also a place in England. So you could say like all <laughs> all uh, uh, all Rome's Rome. No, all all roads Rome to Leeds. 
And I was like, oh, I wonder yeah. how many different combinations of that that there are that, that makes sense. <laughs> and that was like that was like all I did in a day was <laughs> figure that out. So uh, this this sort of puzzle sounds like the perfect uh, type of activity to to be uh, ramping back up and like uh, you know you're you're getting something done and still doing AI, but like uh, low pressure and not not like incredibly mentally taxing sounds yeah. sounds like fun yeah. i like it. it it's also like uh if you actually do it to learn something um which you can't help but do for some of the challenges like it, it's actually really neat some of the stuff they're trying to teach you like the convince an ai that uh, a wiener dog is a hot dog um yeah. that's actually like you have to like you you have the actual model and so you have to like look at the actual weights of the model and, and figure out the gradients and stuff and so that's that's and then cool. actually like do back propagation like try to figure out how to trick it and that's something i hadn't really done before and so um yeah but I got that one working, so that felt good. Very yeah, cool. They all feel good when you get them working. Uh, it's just extraordinarily frustrating when you don't <laughs> even know exactly what to do. I think the technique there is you have, uh, I don't know if this would be called like an adversarial neural network, but you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're basically just like changing random bits in your input, trying to get the input, lo looking at the output neuron of like hot dog and seeing in what direction you can randomly change the bits that, that give you uh, a higher weight for the hot dog output is that right yeah exactly so so you can you could randomly change it and that would take like a really long time but if you change bits and then look at the gradient of the thing then you can actually tell how if you should what which bits you should move up and down yeah so you have to actually look at the gradient of the of the thing the gradient of it so you're, you're looking at you're sorry looking yeah at gradient the slope, is like the, the direction that that it's it's changing in and then you try to move more in that direction Exactly, yeah. So gradient in neural networks is, so you have a loss function at the end, which is like, so your loss function is how much does this picture look like a hot dog? Mm -hmm. um, and so you take the wiener dog picture and you change the bits and you run it through and you basically say, um, as you run it through the network, the gradient is the essentially the derivative or the backwards pass of that. So it's like, um, yeah, it's the derivative of the network basically. And, that, and that's how all machine learning is done. Um, but if you want to, you know, change the output it usually usually this is covid brain sorry i'm, I'm uh, <laughs> struggling to come up with words usually you're changing the weights of the network but in this case you want to change the weights the um the actual pixel values of the image mm -hmm. so it's a slightly different uh, thing so you're still doing this backwards pass with the gradient which is the derivative of the network but you're looking at the how it affects the, the actual image instead of the weights of the network that's remarkable to me that that can work. You're applying the same technique, but in reverse. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's cool that that functions. Yeah, it's it's how some of the first um, uh, generative stuff was done with neural networks. Mm. So, for example, say you get a really robust uh, neural network that can like show the difference between a cat and a dog, um, or or like random noise in a dog, for example. Then you fix that as is. You run a bunch of random noise through it, and you change values until it looks more like a dog. Mm -hmm. Then, if you do it right then it will change that into a dog and you know, like a, that's so you can generate a picture of a dog yeah and i mean if you so. develop that and pump millions and millions of dollars into it you get uh dolly <laughs> and you could just yes. like beat it a string and, and a random it, it, exactly it, it, yeah. it dolly is a, a more uh robust like it's not a completely ran it's um it's not like it doesn't work like that but yes it, okay. that's the ba that was the basis it, of how it all started in in, yeah. in what ways is dolly different do they not start with a, a random static image um mm, let's see uh i'm confusing dolly and image gen now which is google's one of them does one of them's called diffusion one of them something else but so diffusion is you uh essentially start with random noise mm. and you turn it into yeah the embedding of the thing but you don't have to do this back propagation thing like i was talking about you just run it through the network a bunch of times and okay. it um uh, it does it for you basically so it's like you you trained a network to do that step for you basically Got it. So it takes way less time You've, you've trained a machine to just like every time I feed it an image, it makes it more dog like. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. If I just yeah. run an image through that a bunch of times, it, it becomes a dog. Okay. Right. Okay. Interesting. So that, that is starting with random noise. Is there a, a technique that doesn't use random noise? Yeah. So uh, GANs is one that, well, so they all sort of start with random noise, but there's a difference between like taking random noise and sort of morphing it into the thing. Mm -hmm. And um, what GANs do is they start with random noise, but then they. Uh, so, so with a GAN, you have two networks that are competing, basically. Mm. You have a generator, which takes this random noise and wants to make it look more like a um, an image. And then you have this discriminator, which is like saying if this image is fake or not. Mm. And so that's fundamentally different than like shifting the noise. 
I'm not explaining this very well, but yeah, it, so, so it, that's different. Yeah. But the, the other way is called uh, auto regressive, which is like you take noise and you regret you, you change it until it becomes an image and GANs are, are different. They don't do that. So got it. GANs have some uh, yin yang stuff going on. Like one is creatively coming up with stuff and the other one's like chopping it down. It's yep. like this, this map reduce. Uh, that's a, that's a pattern I keep seeing just in the world. Um, oh, while we're on the topic of Dolly, have you seen uh, the the Dolly prompt book stuff that's come up where you can buy prompts that people have written? Or there was a free uh, big slideshow that was released that showed a bunch of different techniques and all these dimensions that you can change stuff? Yeah, I saw the free one. I didn't know that you could pay for it, but that makes sense, I guess, too. But yeah, I, I have the free PDF sitting on my desktop. But I was going to look at that at some point. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was just leafing through it. And so interesting like the, to, to be able to come up with a successful prompt or, or to know the words to use to be able to change an image in a certain way is a skill. That's like yep. people are going to be better and worse at doing this. And there's, I think there's going to be like professional dolly artists that are able to, uh, you know, you, you describe to this person what you want and they're able to translate that into the language of, of dolly. Um, and then that job, I feel like, is going to disappear real quickly because like, uh, you know, dolly's just going to get better at interpreting the prompts as people are, are trying to say them. Um, but I, I just thought it was so interesting that like tying into the no code movement, uh, th there's this idea that like we'll be able to get to a point where you can sort of just, just describe to a computer what, what you want to do mm -hmm. in words and then work with it and say like, ah, I'd like an iPhone app that has, you know, user logins and Facebook logins and uh, you're able to like posts and stuff and then the computer does that for you. But like you never get rid of coding. You just go to a higher level of coding. You're, you're just right. able to express more with less. Um, the, the computer takes up more of the burden of it, but there still is value in expertise of understanding how the computer's working and what its limitations are and um, how, how you can craft exactly the right prompt. Um, and I, I thought that was really interesting seeing that pop up so quickly with Dolly that like we already have like a style guide. We already have a, a code yeah. language that, that people can use uh, with this that is very unintuitive. It's like, you know, uh, uh, if, you, if you have the name of a specific type of lens, a sigma something, and you say that the F value is 1.2 or 1.4, uh, that that gets you an image that looks a particular way, like it was taken with that camera. Um, yeah, so interesting. Uh, I also had the thought that it's it's interesting that uh, this technique feels bounded by things that already exist. Like, mm -hmm. the, you know, you can tell it to to make something in the style of Monet or in the style of Van Gogh or in the style of digital art or 3D art. But those are all art that we already have. <laughs> like, wh what might it look like if it was coming up with its own style of art? Uh, would would it support that right out of the gate, or would we have to feed it thousands of examples first for it to learn? You know, we, you know, we probably need less examples for the the new types of art, but like, uh, yeah, that that it's a, it's it's interesting to see the the limitations of the system and to see that like this isn't magic; it's just another way of computing, and it's just another tool in making digital art. Uh, we're still going to have artists who are really good at writing prompts for Dolly. Uh, and also still like it's an amazing technology we could <laughs> we can yeah. describe an image and it just makes it that, that's so cool yeah yeah prompt engineering is totally going to become a thing which is super neat I, I liken it sort of to google so like with google you can find anything and anyone can find anything but mm -hmm. there is a specific way to ask google for certain things mm -hmm. um, like you know if, if you you know want some obscure thing sometimes you have to add you know like file type colon whatever or you have to add url colon whatever or you have to like ask it in a certain way and then know which link to click on and so even with something as ubiquitous as google it's still like i'll say you know say difficult for my mom to find certain things where i can find it in you know two clicks or whatever and mm -hmm. the same with prompt engineering you know for some people it will be very natural for them and they will learn very quickly how to do good prompts and for other people it will take a lot longer yeah um and then the other thing about the like in the style of monet or whatever um I think what will happen is people will come up with new styles, but in order to do that, you'll have to, instead of saying like in the style of Monet, you can say, uh, you know, made to look like it was painted with a, this kind of brush and in this mm. certain way and stuff. So it's just a longer process to describe what you want and get what you want. Um, whereas saying in the style of Monet is super quick and mm. anyone can do it. So yeah, I, I think there's original work to be done for sure. Um, it's just going to take more iterations and, uh, you have to know more about how to actually write the prompts. Yeah. There was a related tip in that free PDF about how to craft prompts where you deconstruct 
phrases like in the style of Monet. So you, uh, it was really clever how they did this. They they go to GPT three and they say something like, you know, describe a Monet painting. Yeah. And it's like, oh, it's you know this type of brushstroke and it's pastel colors and it's uh, whatever. Uh, but it, you you get a, a sentence out of that that describes Monet, and then you can take that sentence and then change it how you want. And now you're sort yeah. of crafting your own style. Uh, man, amazing! Like <laughs> we are cyborgs that can uh, make art in combination with computers. Like um, so so cool. Um, oh, there was something else I wanted to say about uh, the GPT three stuff, and uh, I'm going to say COVID brain. I forgot what I was going to say, and it might okay. come up later. Um, there's also Dali. There's a so there's a free service called Mid Journey, which is pretty cool. Hmm. Um, and then there's a new new uh, one coming out called uh, it's called Stable Diffusion, but it's going to be like the releasing weights, and so it's going to be fully open source. And what's really interesting is they're all really neat. And then I mentioned Google's, which is Image Image Gen, um, which is about on the level of Dali too, but hmm. they use a different, slightly different data set, and they use, it's a different type of thing. And so they can all do sort of the same thing, but the outputs actually look different from each of them. They all have sort of their own fingerprint. Like Midjourney is very sort of artistic and abstract compared mm. to Dali, which is trying to be very literal in a lot of ways and stuff. And so um, it's not like one model is going to rule them all. It's like you want more abstract, then go like more of this Midjourney route. And if you mm. want more, you know, literal, then go Dali. And if you want, so there's going to be really interesting sort of divisions between even models, which do on the surface the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. There's still a role for a human to be picking the right tool to use for the particular yeah. job. I talked with someone at MicroConf, this last MicroConf, uh, who, who uh, is in Tiny Seed, uh, and I can't remember the name of his company, but I'll, I'll post it in the show notes, who has a company that like uses these sorts of networks. I think he's running his own networks, but- Is that uh, Assembly it's a, Oh, is it Assembly? Oh, no, or that's something No, totally Assembly's different. the audio one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, a, it's a word like Assembly. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, anyway, okay. We'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, yeah. But he is trying to serve people who would be buying stock images. Uh, so, like, you know, for, for the average company, if, if if I'm trying to write a blog post for File Inbox and I just want a graphic to put up on a, on a blog post, like, Dolly is not yet at the point where I can use it for that purpose. Like, uh, oh, it kind of yeah. is. It, there's there's say, a gap. I, yeah. So stock images are great for super realistic, very specific things. Mm -hmm. uh, where I've seen a lot of companies start to use Dali for is things like just to get the image or the, the sort of general feeling of something across. And mm -hmm. so instead of, you know, like a person sitting at a computer typing, you mm -hmm. can have like, you know, a sort of artistic ish looking computer, like things that are artistic generally do better because they don't have to be so uh, rigid. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, like, like sort of artistic interpretation of someone working at a computer. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I've already seen people start to use Dali uh, for to replace stock images. Yeah. The, the product that I want, that I feel like this microconf person is sort of gearing their company towards, um, is like, I want to be able to say, this is my brand. So every image I get mm -hmm. from you, I want it to feel in this particular way. I want it to have these colors in it, or I want it to have this emotional tone, or I want it to be in this style. And then I want to be able to say for any given blog post, maybe like, I give you the title of the blog post or like I give you the content of the blog post or I just describe the image that I'm looking for and then you give me however many choices uh, that I can pick the, the the next image from and sort of the same way that Dolly does like I can pick one and say uh, iterate on this a little bit um, and I don't know that that product exists yet and yeah no it, it doesn't you can kind of do it with Dolly which is I think this is probably how something like this will happen which is say you have like your logo right mm -hmm. and you and Dolly has this thing where you can put an image on a screen and then it will complete that image mm. or, or like whatever. So say the bottom part is your logo and it has all your brand colors and everything and whatever. And then the top part, it, like you erase it mm. and then you fill that in. Um, then that, then the image that you fill in sort of grows out of this thing, which means it sort of matches the style and the colors and the logo and stuff. And then you shift all that down and do it again. And then you get a full sized image, which has your logo general colors and stuff. Mm. Uh, so you can already sort of do that, but it's like three or four steps. So yeah, I don't think there's a tool yet that does it all in one. That's a very clever way to do it. I was thinking then that like the bottom of your images would all need to be the same, but yeah, if you're, if you're, if you complete it and then shift it down and then fill in the top of it, then yep. yeah, that would. That would fix that. Yeah, that's a that's a really good technique. I like that. Um, cool. Any other stuff with Dolly? Uh, or AI no. in general. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's all neat. It's crazy stuff. Living in the future. It's it's awesome. Okay. I think that that phrase was even in the the free PDF book. Like this is yeah. <laughs> let's just take a second. Like this is nuts. <laughs> this is so cool. 
Um, in that case, I'm going to talk about uh, some of the things I did and didn't do this last week. Uh, right. I didn't do almost any computer stuff, uh, including <laughs> anything on File Inbox. Uh, I haven't done any email. It's not happening. Uh, I need to send my tax stuff in to my accountant uh, so that he has time to submit my business taxes before the 15th of September. And I uh, haven't done that. Shoot. I sure got, would like to I do, do that today. too. Oh, no. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm amazed that I've been doing this for so long and like I still don't quite have this systematized. Every time it gets easier, yep. but like every yeah, year it sneaks still, up on me. It's still a pain. Uh, yeah. The main thing I need to do is like there are some business expenses that I bought with my personal credit card because mm-hmm. I bought them from Amazon and I have a personal Amazon uh, Amazon card. So like I get, I think, 5% back or something ridiculous um, when I buy stuff from Amazon with the Amazon card. And I just need to go through and like manually categorize, go through like every expense I made for uh, 2021 and uh, say which one's our business stuff uh i haven't done any time tracking except sleeping and waking up i just have the one button by my bed and i (laughs) hit it when i go to sleep (laughs) so i know exactly how long i've been sleeping but i don't know anything else Uh, yeah i just it's so interesting being in this new environment and doing this totally new work because like i have i've done so many things to just streamline my main computer work Mm -hmm. uh to make everything easier and i've got all these shortcuts and stuff and you know when when i have a task at the beginning of the day of like build this thing in a wood i'm like i gotta start from scratch like i gotta figure out where the saw is and i gotta figure out like is the battery charge and i gotta set up an environment of like oh, i need a sawhorse i don't have a saw let me build a <laughs> right. sawhorse uh yeah it's it's fun and uh i'm feeling i'm, I'm noticing that like i have removed so much friction in the process of doing things on computers um that this is a it, it, it's it's enlightening to see, to, to be working in an environment where I still have all that base level friction. Um, and then it's really fun to be like, well, I'm used to things working so easily where things are just like within arm's reach and, uh, and anything I need is right there and uh, all my common tasks are, are made really simple. So because I feel that itch, like I'm slowly building out these processes to, to <laughs> be working in more physical places. Um, like, you know, just always wearing a headlamp uh, just saves <laughs> so much time because I don't need to have it on all the time, but right. uh, I'm, I'm in the work I've been doing very frequently in places that aren't being lit. Uh, so, or like I, I need a special, uh, especially light in this one place, but uh, it's all different places and it's, it's dependent on where I am. So a headlamp is just the perfect solution. Um, that, that sort of thing has been fun to like build out and reduce that, that sort of friction. Uh, I also, and I apologize for this, have not yet edited the last episode that we did. So, uh, <laughs> listeners and watchers may have noticed the last episode was late. That is entirely my fault, uh, and I'm sorry. But I'll, I'd like to get that done today. <laughs> today, that, <laughs> today's more of a, a computer working day. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and then I can talk about all sorts of things that I did. But, uh, yeah, those those are the things I didn't do. We'll we'll start there. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, I, I've noticed. Um, so, like. Uh, you're talking about like stuff like wearing a headlamp all the time so with with my stuff around the house like you almost always need a hammer and a drill and some nails Mm. and a tape measure and whatever and so i have built this bag over the years that has become my home repair bag i love it example so yeah that's like no matter you know no matter what i need to do in the house i 99 percent of the time have the tool in this this home repair bag um so stuff like that yeah it's making systems that that make things better um but then all the rest of my tools are just in a bins and big pile <laughs> and every time i go through that i'm like i really need to sort this stuff because it's so frustrating when you can't get what you need like right yeah. away uh but i do things so like rarely you know like once a month or something so i only feel the pain once a month so i uh i never sort them <laughs> but, that's uh, the problem with infrequent yeah. tasks i think that's why i'm still feeling so much friction doing taxes because like yeah i only do this once a year i've only done this you know i don't know eight or nine times yeah so yeah i think it's it's okay that it's not totally systematized because i don't do it very often yeah Um, well and it's always something super annoying so like you i have so i think i only have one weird thing this year which is uh so i was traveling somewhere and the my credit card company flagged my card as like being out of state or whatever and Mm. i'm like yeah i'm out of state but it took a day to resolve that and so i had to pay for things with my company card while they resolve that uh, and so like I know I have like a day's worth of expenses that I have to oh. move over and it's like uh, the, whole, <laughs> the whole time I, the, I was only thinking like oh this is gonna be such a pain in taxes <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, so stuff like that it's just annoying one-off things you got to do yeah. 
how do you categorize business expenses? Do you use QuickBooks or something else? I use uh, Excel. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I, yeah, I have I have so few that really matter. Like most of the stuff is just on a credit card, and so it just doesn't matter. Like, we've talked about this before, I think. And I, I go the super simple route, which is yeah, just that. And then for one-off things like um, the when I accidentally or not accidentally when I had to use my credit card company credit card, I'll just um, yeah write those up in an Excel doc basically with uh, a description of why that's the case, mm-hmm. and then um, write myself a check. Uh, for my personal account to my business account. Mm. Um, that's how I do it. Got it. Do you have an accountant that does this or do you file your taxes yourself? I have an accountant that files the taxes, but I have to get everything. But I think if I could just give all the raw data to him and he would figure it out, but I think that would cost a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so, yeah, so I do all the pre-work and then I write up basically just a, you know, a one page document explaining what all the numbers are. And yeah. then I provide him all the numbers with all the, like the statements. Okay. Um, and then he basically types that into whatever software he uses and it spits yeah, yeah. out my return. Yeah. Do you mind me asking how much he charges you to do that? Uh, I think it's like 300 bucks a year or something like that. Um, okay. That's, that's and I think, nothing. No. It's, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not bad at all. I, and that's personal and business, I think. Maybe, cool. it's four, maybe, four, maybe it's four or 500 because he also does my payroll. So, uh, yeah. I don't even know. It's, it's like a few hundred dollars. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 The, the, I, I was with the more corporate company um, who was charging me like uh, something like twelve or fifteen hundred dollars a year, uh, and I, I started doing that in a really unusual year where I sold a bunch of crypto, and I was just terrified mm. of like, I want to make sure that I do this right. <laughs> right. Like, oh boy, I sure don't want to go to jail. Um, and then I stayed with them for a while, and then I was talking with someone at Microconf um, who recommended their accountant to me because they said he only charges like six hundred dollars, uh, and. That account has been great. Uh, I've used him for, I, I used him for the first time this last year, but like it, it was the situation you're describing. I just gave him access to my QuickBooks and uh, he was able to get the numbers he needed and, and make the document. And when he submitted them, it was so much simpler than when I was using the corporate thing. Like the corporate thing had a bunch of like addendums and stuff attached to mm-hmm. it. And he just did like the one sheet. So I think I want to start doing my own taxes. I don't know, like submitting them. And okay, here's the reason why. I don't understand why I categorize things, and I don't. I'm, it's driving me crazy. Like, what does it matter if if it's a business expense or like a server thing, or who? At what layer does this matter? So, like, to figure that out, I feel like I have to be going one level deeper just to understand, like, why? Yeah. Like, because I think it's probably as simple as, like, I don't know. Maybe there's three different categories of things, and. Uh, or maybe it's only for when I get audited that it matters that I know what the category is. Do you have any idea why we're categorizing things? Do you know why we're doing this? <laughs> well, I don't. So there you go. <laughs> um, I, so I think it matters that. So so I I did my own taxes. Um, the I, not my business taxes, my personal taxes. I did my own personal taxes for a few years. So I feel yeah. like I understand a lot of tax stuff, which is pretty good. Um, for business stuff at our level, the categorization that matters is capital expenditures or not so like if you buy a computer then that matters okay. um but the difference between paying ten dollars a month for some server fee and ten dollars a month for i don't know whatever education or whatever yeah as far as i know doesn't matter at all for really your level as far that as i know s- i've stressed out so much about like this yeah. the category for like you know how do, how do i how do i pay for something like dolly like what what is dolly is, it, is that is that a software expense is that and the, the categories are for like a all the things in quickbooks are for like a traditional business where it's like yeah uh you know if, if i was buying printer paper I, that okay that's an office supply but like is dolly an office supply or is that like education how so okay knowing that it that the only thing that matters is like capital versus non-capital yeah. uh I, i'm not I, I think i told you this all to tell you this all the time of i'm course. not a tax accountant i have <laughs> yes. no idea i could be yes. doing it totally wrong <laughs> but uh yes expensive capital expenditure like, like yeah because you have to worry about depreciation but yeah. other than that everything else is just an expense okay okay i don't know if this is gonna actually happen because my gosh i have so much stuff to do before the wedding uh yeah don't, don't do it last episode, by the way you're getting married. I'm getting don't, married. Don't do it this, don't <laughs> the, do it this year. On the 18th, what is that, in three days? Yeah, in three days I'm getting married. And there's still like a bunch <laughs> yeah. of stuff to do. Uh, yeah. However, I would like to uh, be able to enjoy uh, our honeymoon to Canada uh, without having to think about taxes. So like I can sort of justify getting taxes done before we leave. And I would really like to do them myself. And I, uh, may, I think what that might look like and what feels exciting to me right now is like if I... 
do the work that I would have done anyway of categorizing and figuring out like, okay, I, I spent this much personally uh, in 2021, and so I think these should count for business expense. So like get to that point, but then don't send that to my accountant yet. Try to do it myself. And I think the only thing he's doing is taking those numbers and just putting them in a PDF. And then he sends yeah. that PDF to the IRS. Uh, and he might have a fancy way of doing it to the IRS, but I think you can also just like mail it in. Um, yeah. So I think I want to like make that PDF and then send it to him and be like, hey, did I do this right? And then if he says yes, then I say, thank you very much. Uh, I don't think I should pay you $600 for that, yeah. but uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. And then you, you have I a huge from there. Yeah, you have the huge advantage that you have the taxes from last year as well. And so yeah. if not much change in your business and not much change in the tax law, which mm -hmm. it could have and you don't even you won't even know. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But if but if it didn't, then you can more or less just copy copy and paste from last year. I mean, okay. change the numbers obviously, right? But yeah, like you can match up your numbers from last year and make sure they're about the same. Yeah. Yeah. And then once I know that lower level, I'll I'll have a much like I want to know if it's just capital versus non capital if that's the only thing that matters and and then even if I do end up using my account uh for future tax stuff I'll know what he's doing that's the part yeah. that I don't like I'm hiring someone and I don't know what they're doing <laughs> like <laughs> I I want to just do it once I've never submitted taxes before like I, I started out using TurboTax for personal stuff and then I as soon as I had a, a corporation uh was hiring an accountant to do it um, and I think I feel like I needed an accountant when I started using them because there was a lot of stuff in the beginning that I had to clean up and that I didn't understand. But like, that's a that's a thing I should be able to do. I want to be able to submit my own taxes. How ridiculous! Yeah. I, I'm the, trying to send the government money and I need to hire someone <laughs> to like properly send it to them. That, yeah, I, I don't yeah. like that. The other thing you can do is I think so. I, presumably, you filed an extension for both your business and personal, which is what yeah. I did this year too. Personal's not due till October fifteenth, I think. So yeah, that's what. Business, uh, so, so you could do your personal ones, like have your accountant still do your business ones this year. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. You basically, just copy those numbers tax. to your personal. Um, yeah, but for sure. The tricky thing about taxes, the reason you're paying them six hundred dollars is not because you can't put numbers into a spreadsheet. It's mm -hmm. because they know which forms in which order to fill out in order to get mm -hmm. to the maximum return, basically. So mm -hmm. I was doing my own taxes, and then I realized I was doing something wrong, and mm -hmm. I realized that because my accountant pointed it out. And not mm -hmm. wrong like I would get in trouble for it, but wrong like I wasn't get as m getting as much money back as I could if mm -hmm. I were to do certain things. And so like the first year, he paid for himself by uh, pointing out that I you know, if I fill out this, it was something I don't remember it anymore, but it's like, if I fill out this form instead of this form, then I get an extra 300 bucks back or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I paid, you know, the money because they know like, you know, based on the category I'm in, if I fill out this form instead of this form, cause there's like, it's not there. It's, it's so frustrating. The frustrating part is there's not one way to do it. There's like a million different ways you could do taxes, especially when you get to complicated things like, you know, business expenses, especially not, not in our business so much, but like, especially like if you're buying and selling real estate or you're doing anything like that, there, there's like 18 different things you could do um, and it just compounds exponentially. And so, yeah, that's why I pay money to get my taxes done. That, that totally makes sense. Um, yeah, like, you know, doing, making one mistake in this can, can cost you way more than the amount that the, uh, that the accountant's charging you. Um, yeah, I, I just want to know how it works. I don't like that I yeah. don't know how it works. I think that's the main thing. <laughs> that's a big yeah. driving point in my personality. Um, Cool. Uh, so that's the stuff I didn't do, the stuff I'm going to do. Uh, here's some stuff I did do this last right. week. Uh, I built a CNC machine, like a, a full-sized, cool. it can cut uh, four by eight sheets of plywood. And that process took so long. That was really <laughs> hard because it's like this very precise woodworking project first to build this frame and then hook everything up. And then it's like this complicated machining problem. Where, like you got to align these gears and do all this calibration. And then it's this very complicated software problem. Like CNCing is hard. You gotta mm. th to have stuff in the proper format, and is, you gotta go from like an SVG to a .nc file, which is the G code file, and then you have to upload it. And each stage of that has been uh, uh, tricky. Uh, but I'm slowly building up the skill of like I'm able to tell a computer precisely how to cut a sheet of plywood, and then I can make stuff out of that. So like I'm making signs for this property, and I'm uh uh gonna build furniture you can you can just like make flat pack furniture from this and have slots where it slots in uh so that's a that's a ton of fun um and then i might be building part of the uh archway that i get married under by having like this intricate design that, that uh cool. sarah made uh yeah so that, that's a lot of fun cnc machines are really cool like <laughs> i really and it, it feels like a perfect melding of these like i'm still using my technical background but it's more woodworking stuff like i'm, I'm building a real thing uh, so I, I really enjoyed that. Um, 
Have you, have you done anything in like woodworking or CNCing? I, I feel like I've asked you this before. I don't think you even have a 3D printer, do you? No, I don't because I know I'd use it twice and stick it on a shelf. <laughs> so I, I am very much avoiding that, even though I'm sure I'd love it the two times that I do it. Um, but no, uh, so I've done wood, woodworking without a CNC. Um, and I've done like, I built my whole deck. Um, we talked about that. And like, um, so I've, I've done a lot of like manual physical things, but uh, with, not without a CNC or not with a CNC. Mm -hmm. um, there, there is a great woodworking channel. Uh, his name is Frank Ho Frank Horrath or something like that. Um, and he has a four by eight CNC and he does some really cool stuff with it. He makes like super intricate designs. Then he like wood turns them and into bowls and stuff. Uh, That's cool. So yeah, if, uh, look, look him up on YouTube uh, if you want some CNC inspiration. Um, but yeah, no, I don't have a CNC. I'll just have to see and see that YouTube channel. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've made that joke. I've made that joke about a dozen times. Sarah, no, no. Sarah was done with it the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, she's like, "Oh, we'll have to see how your uh, how your design turns out." And I'm like, "We'll just have to see." see, how see. It. <laughs> um, uh, so I did that. I uh, finished the rings. So that was like a totally separate project. I'm, I'm yep. like proficient at metallurgy now. I'm like cool. an amateur goldsmith. Did, did uh, the next ones come out better than the first one? I know you weren't. Uh, yes, 100 yeah. percent happy with the first one. Yeah, I'm really happy with this next one. And I, I polished it up so it's super shiny, and I tried it on. Cool. I'm like, oh, this is. I'm excited to wear this. Uh, yeah, it's it's really cool. Um, and then I had a whole bunch of extra wax models. Uh, I, I came up with this clever design where like my ring is outside of Sarah's ring perpendicular yeah. to it. Um, and so I was like, well, we, we kind of nailed it on the first try. Uh, what am I going to do with all this other one? And I brought up a, a bar of silver, like a, uh, I think it's like 10 ounces. Does that sound right? It's, it's like $150 of silver or something. Um, and 10 ounces, uh, 15 an ounce? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Some roughly. Um, and so I, uh, decided to keep the machine, the, the whole like foundry of the, the jewelry casting thing running and print off a bunch of silver copies of our rings to give to there's, there's a very small number of people coming to the wedding i think it's like 11 uh it's just family and siblings so i'm gonna i'm gonna give a, a copy of our wedding rings in silver to each that's of them cool. like the date engraved on it yeah um that's and awesome. there's a little bit of gold from our rings in the silver rings because gold and silver it's kind of really stuck well to it yeah Neat. Um, yeah that's cool uh, uh, mixed in actually are, i think it like, are, are they like, linked too like so they're still linked there, yeah. So uh, the the way that I printed it and the way that I casted it, it's like my ring on the outside of Sarah's ring, uh, oh, perpendicular, okay, and yeah, then yeah. for the actual rings, I I just sawed them apart. Um, Got it. But for the ones that we're giving to people, and they're they're still together, it's like all one unit of a of a thing. Oh, that's cool. That, that's uh, the type of yeah. super unique gift that CNC and uh, you know. 3d printers can do that you yeah. just can't do any other way that's, that's yeah. pretty cool which is why like this general process of like i could have just bought rings right uh <laughs> yeah uh, we, we could have just gone to a jewelry store and like uh, uh, you know, that's what i did it, it was yeah. easy it's so yeah. much i would save so much time like not, not knocking anyone who, who does that like it makes so much more sense uh but i really enjoy doing things this way where like i've picked up a new skill and i can do things that don't really make sense that like i can make silver versions of the thing and uh if, if i asked a jeweler to do that they'd be like what are you talking about like no we can't <laughs> we can't do that uh like we don't even make it we just we just stock it and, and right. this other person supplies it um and the the end result that i got is like not nearly as good as it would have been from a jewelry store um i bought this really expensive uh burnout furnace uh that can like really precisely burn stuff out hoping that it would solve this issue I was having where the, the wax wasn't totally burning out. And I'm still getting some of that and I don't quite know why. Um, so there's like little imperfections and, and like pitting and stuff, but I love it. Like I made it. <laughs> if I bought it from a jewelry store, I'd be like, what the hell is this crap? Like <laughs> I need a perfectly smooth machine service. Right. Um, but I, uh, yeah, in, in the same way that like, I wanna, I wanna do taxes just to understand the process of doing it. Uh, I think something I'm growing to much better understand about myself is like, I really like getting into the technical nitty gritty and like understanding how things work at a technical level. Uh, so I did that with the rings and it was really cool. And I got a whole bunch of cool silver mementos that wouldn't have existed otherwise. Very cool. Yeah, that's super neat. Uh, also did just a bunch of other stuff, <clears throat> um, like improvement stuff on the property of pulling down boards and using crowbars and uh, rewiring lights. I can do that now. Like, if you give me a wire with <laughs> like main electricity coming through it at 120 volts, I can wire a light to it. I know how to do that now. Um, cool. And I'm hanging like three more chandeliers in this building uh, later today. Uh, I'm also building an arch to get married under, and I did pocket joints, and I did it really badly, uh, but I'm getting better at it, and I'm, like learning how to use a hammer and chisel, and uh, one of them is like way too tight, and the other one's like way too loose, so I got to figure out something to do with that. Uh, but yeah, I'm, just, I'm, I'm having a blast. It's I feel like I'm at summer camp or something, and uh, just doing stuff 
that I'm not at all qualified for, but that is a lot of fun. Cool. Uh, yeah, that's neat that you have a place that you can go and uh, do that. That's everyone should have in upstate New York. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, family retreat, I guess. I don't yes. Know. Yeah. <laughs> and, a, and a shard village or something. Uh, right. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, my battery is at three percent because right. I'm not in the habit of having my laptop plugged in or charged. Uh, so I think that's gonna have to be all I got. That's all I got too. Then. Then I'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye.